So Jill and the kids are, uh, Jill. Lisa. Lisa. Where did I get Jill at? I saw Jill. Jill in that bright green. Lisa and the kids are staying then with uh, Grandma there in Iowa and, and enjoying that time together. So just keep him in your prayers this week. Uh, that's a long way to go. I'm not sure how long that trip is from Iowa, but uh, it's a long way from here. So just keep him in your prayers. Let's get started this morning with a word of prayer. Let's stand together. And Charlie's going to lead us in the first hymn. Father, we thank you for this day that you've provided. We thank you, Lord, for this good number that have come out this morning to gather together. We thank you, Lord, for this church. We thank you for the blessing it is to each one of us. We pray, Lord, that you would just bless the service. Bless our pastor and his family as their way, Lord. Pray to be a good week of learning and fellowship for him as well and bring him back safely to us. So, Lord, just bless this time together this morning, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning. Turn with me, if you would, please, 492. 492 in your hymnal. <coughs> Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. By God's word at last my sin I learned. Then I trembled at the light's burn. Till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Now I've given to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. multiplied to me, there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan, oh, the grace that brought it down to man, oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. You may be seated. Okay, I better look at these announcements to see what I'm supposed to announce. This week's memory verse, James 4.10. Tonight, uh, we have 5 o'clock here in the bulletin. Tonight, choir, if you wouldn't mind, we'll just meet at 5.30, go over the song that we're going to do uh, next week, so it won't take very long, give you a little extra time uh, there to relax this afternoon. And uh, besides, it's Selection Sunday, and I want to see where Illinois gets placed. No, that's not the reason at all. We just don't need to be here that early tonight. So 5.30 choir, if you would, be here. Uh, coming up, there's a youth activity on April 6th, and I came in a little late and got in on the tail end of all that, so I don't know what's going on. Does someone want to share, Andy? Uh, we're going to be here at 6.30, and then we'll go on to the skate. To roller skate. Good deal. All right. Sounds like fun if you can stand up on wheels, <laughs> and I can't. So, 
I did try. I have tried. It's just not for me. Okay. April 21st, uh, Greg Wendell, Wendell is going to be here. He is a missionary to Kenya, Africa. So looking forward to hearing about that ministry. And then coming up, uh, June 23rd, that sounds like a long way off, but it's not. So we need to start praying right now for that, that uh, half week of services. I'll be in prayer for the groves as they, as they come. Uh, and just be in prayer that uh, we'll have lots of folks respond. I'll be out inviting and let people know about it now. And uh, things start marking their calendars. We've had good turnouts uh, for Brother John when he's been here. So let's, let's really get out and invite folks to be here for that. <clears throat> of course, Wednesday evening is our Patch Club for the kids at 7 o'clock, as well as our Wednesday night service. And I would encourage you to be here on Wednesday night. If you haven't been coming, you've been missing a real blessing. We've been learning so much about the uh, truths of, of God's Word and why we believe what we believe. And uh, every every week it's something new and, and uh, learn something every week. So I encourage you just to be here uh, for that Wednesday night service. This week's missionaries are Larry and Cheryl Ingalls, and they're with Baptist Couriers for Christ, so keep them in your prayers. All right, Jill. April 6th is a uh, community benefit for Matt Palmer, the young man who was a heart transplant. He's been asked to our church to donate six ties, and two have been in our kids' retreat, so he would be willing to do that. This is from 4 to 7 at Don Henry's. It's going to be in his big shed out there. Uh, and every half hour, a different group is going to be performing different kinds of music, several gospel groups and a bluegrass group and some other music. So uh, if you'd like to come to that, do you want to? There should be something in the paper for that coming out as well. Do we have any volunteers right now for pies? Marlene? Three? Okay. All right. So we'll let you take, handle that, Jill. Just let Jill know if you can do that, okay? Phil? We'll still have our, our the breakfast at 8 o'clock. The men are going to serve breakfast. And then we'll go ahead and have our regular Sunday school time and then the morning service and then no service uh, that night. So you can spend the day with your families and, and uh, enjoy that. So, okay. I'm yeah, exactly. Lots of folks traveling. All right. I think that's it. So, Charlie, I think we have another song here. Well, I'll try to make it through this one. <clears throat> a little harder when you're up here singing. You can't really take a break when you're the leader. And <clears throat> I got that tickle in the back of my throat, so I, my apologies. 310 is uh, our next hymn, 310. And I might mention, for those of you that weren't here, that Andy did get a job, so he'll be starting work Monday at actually a, a, a job placement company. So I think maybe that's God directing him there so that, like, uh, Aaron and uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember your husband's name. Oh, but he has a job. You're the one that needs a job, right? No? You have a job too? Oh, amen. We've been praying that way. So, yeah, he could, yeah. <laughs> 
he could pick out the better ones and 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 the folks that he's working for are Christian people. So, uh, a matter of fact, they attend they attend the same church that Marion Odell attends in uh, Pena. So, that's just see how God just blesses you. You just you just got to be patient, though we don't want to. Those things all just work out in his time. Okay, 310. <clears throat> King of my life, I crown thee now, thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn crown brow, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Show me the tomb where thou wast laid, tenderly mourned and wept. thou slept, lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary, let me like me. I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. May I be willing, Lord, to bear daily my cross for thee. Thy cup of grief to share, Thou hast borne all for me. Lest I forget Gethsemane, Lest I forget Thine agony, Lest I forget Thy love for me, Lead me to Calvary. I might have left one thing out about Andy's job. They're they're Cardinal fans. Amen. All right, if we could have our ushers come at this time, we'll take our morning offering. And Jess, would you bless us? I'll ask you to stand with me as we sing our doxology together, please. 
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. I ask that you remain standing and take your Bibles, if you would please, and turn to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, we'll be reading verses 7 and 8 together this morning. Maybe. Sorry, I can't see. Something on my glasses. I'm not as prepared and as polished at this as Tim is, so you just have to bear with me. Okay, Acts chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. <clears throat> and he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You may be seated. This time we'll go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we just want to thank you this morning, Lord, for allowing us together in your house, Lord. And uh, Lord, as we discussed this morning in Sunday school, Lord, how uh, we're able to do this without fear of, of uh, persecution or arrest or imprisonment. And Lord, how we realize that uh, there are places in this world today where a lot of people, a lot of Christians don't have the freedoms that we enjoy here and are persecuted and imprisoned for uh, having a Bible or for attending a Bible study. And, Lord, we just thank you and praise you for our country and for uh, the freedoms that we enjoy here. Uh, Lord, we just, uh, Lord, want to lift up many of our number today that are uh, suffering with illness. And, uh, Lord, we ask that you would just strengthen their bodies and lift them up. And, Lord, we know that it's been... <clears throat> Uh, quite a winter in regard to, to flu and, and other things, Lord, and we just uh, uh, pray that you would just strengthen and heal, Lord. Uh, Lord, this morning we want to lift up our pastor and his family as they've traveled and that you would uh, just continue to watch over and protect uh, him and his wife and family and that uh, you would give him a good time of fellowship uh, with his dad and, and a good time at this conference and, uh, Lord, that you would just uh, watch over them. Uh, Lord, this morning, Lord, we just uh, want to thank and praise you for uh, the missionaries that you allow us to support. And, and uh, Lord, we, we have some that are on the field like Jenny and, and uh, Mike and Vicki that are dealing with visas. And, Lord, we ask that you would just intercede for them and allow that to, to go through, that, that they wouldn't have that worry or concern and they'd have uh, their, their hearts and minds clear to be uh, missionaries and to reach out to uh, the folks there in their areas and their work, Lord, and, and uh, Lord, we just, uh, we just lift up all our missionaries today. Um, <clears throat> Lord, we do want to lift up the Jordan family and the loss they suffered, Lord, and we just ask that you would be near to them and just comfort them as only you can and be just uh, especially there with Betty, Lord, and, and uh, just encourage her. Lord, we also uh, <clears throat> we just want to lift up our country and those uh, men and women that serve in the military, Lord, that you would uh, be with them. We think of Nick as he's there in Afghanistan, Lord, that you would just watch over him and keep him safe. And, uh, Lord, just be with our president, our leaders of our country, Lord. And, and um, Lord, we know that all things are possible with you and that you can uh, lead and direct them, Lord, and that we ask that you would, that our country would, remain on those godly principles that, that we were founded on. Lord, I want to lift up Tim this morning as he's going to stand before us and, and bring your word to us, Lord, that you would just give him the words to speak this morning, Lord, in clearness of thought and mind. And 
And, Lord, that the, the word would go forth and just work in hearts and lives today. And, Lord, we ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, now we're to our fellowship chorus time, which 391 in your hymnal. And we'll sing this through one time if you'll stand with me. And then uh, we'll give you an opportunity to uh, get around and welcome folks. Uh, <clears throat> And then we'll get together and sing that one last time together before Tim comes forth and brings the word to us. <coughs> Back of my throat. It's, it's like a little, uh, it's always a little warmer up here, too, than down there. So it's a start to tell you a bit. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet. Expressions on each face, and I know they feel the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. Blessing, we lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. You may be seated. Am I on? All right. 
Thank you, ladies. No one ever gets to shake their hands, so make sure you shake their hands afterwards. We do appreciate them playing every week. And it's such a good fellowship chorus anyway, because there is such a sweet spirit here. And I can see it on your faces. I can also see the headaches and the sinus problems, too. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of stuff going around, and we need to uh, keep all of our folks in prayer. I see a lot of empty spaces here again this morning, and I know there's a lot of uh, colds and flus, so take care of yourselves. Yes. <laughs> Just be normal. There's plenty enough. Okay. Well, as you can tell, Pastor is not here, so he asked me to fill in for him today. And I said, sure, I will. This time. Someone gets, else gets to do it next time. All right, if you'd like to turn to 1 Corinthians, we're going to talk a little bit about this. Not, not directly, but about the sweet spirit that we enjoy here. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12 is where we're going to be centered in most of the time here this morning. But first of all, just a little bit of an introduction uh, to uh, the church here at Corinth when Paul wrote this letter in chapter 1. Uh, I'll just read here. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I have Apollos, and I have Cephas, and I have Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I know pastors touched on this here recently in some of his messages, but the church at Corinth was, was having a problem. They were plagued with divisions. Uh, the problem was that they had really never matured as believers, and they were still babies in Christ. In chapter 3, verse, first three verses, it says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? So he's telling them, you're still babies. I've tried to, to give you the milk so that you could grow, and you haven't grown yet. Uh, and they had another problem in this church. In chapter 5, the first two verses, it says, It's reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that ye have, that ye hath, that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. It might help if I put my glasses on so I could read. They had a problem with immorality in their midst. There we go. Can you still hear me? Okay. They had a problem with immorality. So the church was plagued with divisions. Paul tells them they're still babies. They haven't grown up enough yet. And they were putting up with sin in the church. But in spite of all of that, this congregation still seem to have most, if not all, of the spiritual gifts that were available to them. Now, the problem wasn't that they didn't possess the gifts. It was that they wanted gifts that had not been assigned to them by God. When God gifts the Christians, when he gives a Christian a gift, he does so by his sovereign will. If you're in chapter 12, 
verse 11 says, But all these worketh that one and the self-seen spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. And then verse 18, But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. So when God gives the gift to a Christian, he does it by his will. And in Corinth at this church, by practicing gifts that they had not received, there was chaos and confusion in the church. It seemed that most of the people there wanted gifts that brought attention to themselves. And one of the main ones was the gift of tongues. They all thought they should be speaking in tongues, having the gift of tongues. And they thought that was more important than, than the gifts that actually ministered to others, the gifts of ministry, the gifts of help, the gifts of giving and mercy, things that actually benefited other people. But they wanted the flashy gifts, you know, the one that brought attention. They were coveting more than they were given. And Paul is writing here in Corinthians to show them a better way. And what we're going to look at today is the fact that every believer in this room today, every believer sitting here today, has been gifted by God for service. So we're going to be looking at basically the, the gifts of the Spirit here today. And although we may be different in our gifts or the ability that we have, or the position that we have in the church, we are all important in the body of Christ. Uh, chapter 1 and verse 12, back here in 1 Corinthians says, Now this I say that every one of you saith, that's not the right verse. Skip that. Forget it. That goes somewhere else. Anyway, I wrote down the wrong verse there. But we are, every one, important regardless of our standing, regardless of the gift that we have. So, first of all, let's look. Uh, we're going to be in, in verses 12 through 27 here this morning. Let's just read through this passage as we begin. Chapter 12, verses 12 through 27. It says, For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? And now are, there, are they many members, yet but one body? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of, you, of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, these, those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. All right, we'll stop there. Beginning in verse 13, we see our placement in the body. Where do we stand? Where are we put in the body? We're going to look at three Ps here. First of all, it's passive, it's personal, and it is permanent. Now, there's a, a false doctrine that's all around us today, 
and that false doctrine teaches that at some point in your Christian life, you need to have a second blessing to obtain the Holy Spirit. And we hear that around us quite often. Have you received the, the filling of the Holy Spirit? You know, it's Christians talking to Christians. The moment we receive Christ as our Savior, we're given the Holy Spirit. We don't have to wait for it to come at another time. And when we receive the Holy Spirit at that same moment, we're placed into the body of Christ. Now, that's not something that we have earned the right to. It's not something that we have done of ourselves with our own talents and abilities to get us to that point. It's an act of God. He chooses to do that. And as we go along in our Christian life, we don't get more and more of the Holy Spirit. Uh, he doesn't come along every so often when, at a revival service and there's a big message and it touches our hearts and oh, that person needs some more of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't do that. When we're saved, we get all of the Holy Spirit. He is within us. What we do have happen, though, is that as we grow, He simply gets more control of our life. And He's more evident in our life. It's not that we've added more of Him. It's that we have allowed Him to become more of us. And it's more evident. And that's how we grow. And that's how we become more spiritual in our daily life, by allowing the Holy Spirit to do the work in us that he is there to do. So it's passive. It's not something that we can do of ourselves. God does it of his own free will. He gives us that Holy Spirit at salvation. It's also personal. There in verse 13 it says, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. We are all. That means it happens in the life of every believer. Okay? Every believer. The moment you're saved, you receive that Holy Spirit. The real concern here is that every person is sure that they're truly saved. If you say, I don't feel the Holy Spirit within me, then you need to examine your, yourself. Am I really saved? Or did I just go up when all the rest of the kids went up that day in Sunday school? Did I go because all my friends went up at that youth meeting? Did I truly accept Christ as my Savior? And if you did, the Holy Spirit is residing within you. So are you truly born again? And only you can ask, answer that question. I can't look at you and say, no, I can tell you're not. Or yes, I can tell you are. Only you can answer that. Are you truly born again? And if you are, you have the Holy Spirit. And the third thing is it's permanent. Once a person has been baptized into the body of Christ, they are there to stay. He doesn't let us go. When you get in the body of Christ, you can't get out. Okay. No matter what the world tries to tell us, you cannot lose your salvation. He's given that to you. It's a free gift, and once you accept it, it's yours. And he will not take that away. So that's how we get placed in the body, by accepting Christ as our Savior. How about our position in the body? How do we fit into this body of Christ that we talk about? Verses 14 through 24. Verse 14, first of all, it says, For the body is not one member, but many. So every believer is a part of the body of Christ. Every part is essential to the proper function of the whole. But the body is thought of as one. Just think of it as a car. A car is made up of an engine, and the engine is made up of multiple parts itself. But when you look at it, you don't say, that's a nice engine sitting there. You say, that's a nice car. That's part of it. 
There's many parts that make it all up, but we think of it as a whole, as one, one single unit. When we look at the church, it's the same thing. It's made up of many parts. There's about 50 of us here today, 50 parts. But we are one church. We're one unit. And yet this one unit is one part of many parts in the world. And all those parts together make up the body of Christ, the universal body of Christ. Okay? So we're all just part, but we're part of a whole. This body of Christ is made up of people from all walks of life, all cultures, all levels of society, all levels of wealth. None of us are the same. Every one of us is different. It's made up of people who have nothing in common, oftentimes, except the fact that they have received Jesus as their Savior. That is the common denominator in the body of Christ. Aren't you glad we aren't all the same? I'd hate for you all to be perfect like me. It would not be fun. Cardinal fan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> when every believer fills the place that he or she has been assigned to by God, when you have taken your place in the body, then the body functions as it should. When that happens, God is glorified, and the work of the kingdom is carried out. But you have to be in your place. When we all do our part, unity and blessing are what follow. And that's the only way we can have those things here. Verses 15 through 20, we see that every believer is placed by God. He says, if the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? And if the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet one body. Paul uses a little bit of humor here, if you haven't caught that. And he, he likens the parts of the body to our body parts. talks about the ears and the hands. I'm really squeaking up here. Aren't I? Pastor must be playing words with friends with me. <laughs> he does that at 1230 at night. My phone buzzes. He never goes to sleep, I guess. I don't know. That's much better. But he, he, he references the parts of the body. And he says, you know, if this section over here, if you were the eye, okay, and, and you guys were the ear, and you were the nose, okay, they're all separate parts of the body, right? Uh, but if the rest of us thought, hey, the eye looks good, I want to be the eye, what good would we be? All we could do was see. Or if the eye and the ear say, I want to be the nose, what good would we be? All we can do is smell. We can't all be the same part. We can't be the same piece. Uh, we would be useless if we were. And what Paul is saying here is that God has placed us in the body where he wants us to be. You are where you are because that's where God is wants you to be. It may not be a high-profile pro position. You may not be the pastor. You may not be a deacon or a teacher. Maybe you're a clerk. Maybe you're a janitor. Maybe you just cook when there's a meal. Those are all positions. Those are all places. Those are all gifts that you're given. It may not be something you even want to do. But if it has pleased the Lord to put you where you are, then it's the right place for you to be. And you need to be there doing what he's put you there to do. God knows us. 
he, and he knows where we can best function. You may think you can do something better in another area, but God's given you a different gift, and you, and you do it well. He wants you to do that thing to the best of your ability because that's why he's given that to you to do. And we can't become like the church at Corinth where everyone was wanting everyone else's gifts because they seemed better. They got more attention. When that happens, again, chaos and confusion comes in. So every believer is placed by God. He knows where he wants to put us. Every believer plays an important role. We see that in verses 21 through 24. It says, And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. So every believer has an important role to play in the body of Christ. And it's important for the functioning of the body that we do what we're designed to do. What Paul's saying here is that every part of the body needs every other part of the body to fully carry out the work of the body. Okay? The arm needs the head. Our feet need our eyes. Just consider walking in the dark. You can't see. How confident are you of that next step that you take when you're in the dark? You're not. You need your eyes to be able to see what's ahead. You need your eyes to be able to see what you're reaching out for. They spend a lot of time talking about safety at work. And they always talk about seeing what, what, you're, what you're reaching for. Don't just reach for something. Look to see what you're reaching for. Every part of the body needs every part of the body to carry out the work of the body. I was going to entitle this message, My Sore Thumb. I hate the dry air and everything of winter. And this week, my thumb cracked. You ever had that happen? It cracks in the, in the corner? And this week I've had to wear a shirt and tie a couple times. Do you realize how hard it is to button a little button when your thumb's cracked? You can't touch any part of that thumb without the pain going through your entire body. And how many of you have ever had gout? You don't even want air touching that toe, do you? It hurts, and it affects your entire body. We don't realize how much we rely on a part of the body until it starts to hurt, and then the whole body hurts. Every part of the body is important, and it carries out a role, and no believer should ever think that they are not important to the work of Christ. No matter what the gift is that you've been given, every member is important. Every member is vital to the work of the church. There is only us. There is only us. And we all need each other to function as a body. We rely on each other to do the work that we've all been called to. So what's our purpose in the body? Verses 25 through 27. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. First part of verse 25, <clears throat> he says that there should be no schism in the body. So part of our purpose here is to promote unity, to promote unity. His plan for us is that we be united. Philippians 1.27 says that we stand, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. 
So part of our purpose here is to promote unity one with another. The last part of verse 25 and verse 26 tells us that we're supposed to practice mutual care, caring for one another. Uh, It says, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. When another member is hurting, when another believer is hurting, we need to respond to that need, no matter what the hurt is. It could be a multitude of things. It could be just illness, and we've suffered enough of that this winter, haven't we? But people have helped. It could be loss of loved ones, and there's been a lot of that, it seems, this past year. And we love those who've lost and reach out to them. Many are are without jobs or have been without work or are looking for work, and we pray for them. That's how we, we can love them. We can't give them jobs, but we can sure pray and, and encourage them, and that's how we do that. That's how we respond to that need. Galatians 6.2 says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. So fulfill the law of Christ. So we need to practice mutual care as well. Paul tells us in Romans 12.5, or 12.15, I'm sorry, to rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. We need to keep that in mind. We rejoice. Andy has a job. We rejoice with Andy's parents that Andy has a job. Amen? Amen. We need to weep with those who've lost loved ones or those who are going without work right now. Weep with them. Let them know you care. And then in verse 27, the last verse here, it says, Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Last point is to participate together in the activity of the body. When everything functions as it should, the body operates efficiently and accomplishes much. When there's unity in the church, the church gets a lot done. When the church has unity in it, those who come in from the outside and see it, see something different. Many times they want to become a part of it. That's how the church grows. But we have to have that unity. And it has to be real. And it comes from using the gifts that God has given us. If we don't function the way we should, then there's problems and nothing much gets done as it should. Churches can go for years and years and never accomplish anything for the Lord. They may be spiritual, they may be there every Sunday, but if they aren't working together, if they aren't using the gifts that God's given them, the church just sits there. Oftentimes you don't have unity in that spirit of love in those churches either. It becomes cold. But when we use our gifts, when we realize that everyone around us depends on our gift, to be, to, to be a part of their life as well and the functioning of the church, then we have that love, we have that unity. Paul's goal as he wrote this letter was to get the church to see that every member needs every other member. And they need them to be in their place and doing the, the assigned function that God has assigned them. The head needs the foot. The foot needs the big toe. The arm needs the hand on it. Those things don't work without the other part. The church doesn't work if you aren't here and you aren't doing the job that God has given you to do. Hebrews 10.25 Hebrews 10.25 says, 
not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. We don't have a whole lot of time left here on this earth. God is, I, I don't know why he hasn't come back already. There's a reason for it. He could come any moment. And the more time we spend together with one another, the more that we can, as the scripture says, exhort one another, build each other up, or, or edify one another, the better we are to reaching this world around us. That's why we need to be in our place when the doors are open. So, in conclusion here, you may not have the gift or the position that someone else has. You may not even know what your gift is at this point. You may be a new Christian and you just don't know yet what God has for you to do. But let me encourage you just to come before the Lord today and ask Him to show you what your gift or your gifts are. And then ask Him to use you and that gift to build one another up, to be a part of this body, to bring it together, to help it to function as it should. He gave you a gift the moment you received him, and he intends for you to use it to complete the body that you are a part of. That's Grace Baptist Church. There may be someone that's not saved that's here today, and you need to make that decision before it's too late. We don't have much time. We have no guarantee. We have no guarantee of the next minute. We have no guarantee of, of tomorrow or, or next week or next year. You need to make that decision today. And then the moment you do, you're going to receive a gift from the Holy Spirit. Realize you receive two gifts when you get saved. You get the gift of eternal life and you get a, a spiritual gift to use to help bring others to him. So make that your prayer today. Ask God to show you that gift. If you know what that gift is, just ask God to help you use it to the best of your ability. And this church will continue to grow and will continue to enjoy the unity and the love that we have right now. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your gifts. We thank you most of all for your gift of Jesus Christ and the salvation that we have through his death and his resurrection. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts that you bestow upon each one of us. Help us, Lord, to desire to use those gifts to the best of our ability to serve you. Lord, to be able to reach the world around us as time gets shorter and shorter. Lord, they need to see what true Christianity is. So help us as we go from this place today, as we go into the week ahead, as we get out into the world, Lord, strengthen our, our hearts. Give us a desire for the lost around us, Lord, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me, please. We'll sing the first and the last of 593. <clears throat>
don't forget, we'll meet at 5.30 this evening and just for a short time of practice. And see you all tonight. I think Brother.